Here is a knowledge lecture for the various titles of the Seven Degree Bohemian Camp. The first title is Area. An area is comprised of districts. In each district there are regions. In each region there are lodges. A lodge of four masters represents an area, a district, a region, and the lodge. A lodge of five masters also sends forth an ambassador between one lodge and another. So in each great area lies a grand district, and in each district a vast region and from each lodge in every region, district, and area come a Grand Master, a Rosicrucian of the region, an Illuminatus of the district, and an OTO area chair. The OTO area chair governs the five lodge roles in the Senate as Chief Intelligence Officer. Next down on a lodge bench the district Illuminatus represents the lodge members less initiated than the five bench members to the regional Rosicrucian. The Rosicrucian's job is to come up with possible options for solutions to any intra-lodge issues. They relay their results to the lodge Grand Master of the Essene York Wright Zealots whose job it is in Lodge to compare the agendas of the Rosicrucian, acting intra-Lodge, and the OTO, whose information is relayed to them in turn by the Lodge Ambassador. The OTO and Ambassador sit on the Lodge GM's left, and the Rosicrucian and Illuminati sit to the GM's right. So the interests of the greater area, comprised of the current ambassador's entire prior circuit of no fewer than four lodges, are represented by a permanent position in each lodge, though they receive their own orders only indirectly via those ambassadors. Therefore, trust your visiting Scottish knight Relay your interpretation wisely to your Lodge Grand Master. Allow them, with patience, to weigh your own report against that of the Lodge Rosicrucian. The Rosicrucian must trust their Lodge Illuminati, and you, as the OTO, must trust your visiting ambassador. Such are the lines drawn on the floor of the Senate where the Rosicrucians and Illuminati are the bench speakers, alternates for the chair or throne if the OTO cannot be represented, and the Scottish Knight protects the OTO chair. In Lodge, the GM is the administrator, but in the Senate, they are the furthest guard away from the area chair. But what is the meaning of an area represented as the circuit of the visiting ambassador, interpreted to the local Lodge GM by the OTO, who sits as chair of a Lodge's bench in the Sublime Senate? The Rosicrucians, the blue isosahedron, consider their region of governance to represent the realm of spirit, or Neshima, the ubiquitous phi over pi spiral measuring perfect perpetual periodicity. If the Neshima is only Rosicrucian, to what Empyrean heights must the OTO chair bear treasure from? The OTO, through military-funded experiments with ZPE, has ascertained that the area equivalent to that overseen by an OTO member extends beyond C, the speed of light in space-time. Thus, the OTO chair recognizes that pi is greater than phi, which itself is greater than their difference, 
phi divided by pi. Thus we see that our area of governance extends beyond the fourth spatial Rosicrucian tesseract, beyond C, to see the true light of tachyon shining through the black holes surrounding darkness, invisible before the inversion of C, the bright darkness at the edge of our own continuum, such as illumination, for above the Rosicrucian tesseract of time, Tao sub Tao, and beyond the Illuminati, clear light, sits the area chair of the OTO, the entire vista rolled out like a tapestry before our throne. An area, thus, called within the OTO, a camp also, consists of all that can be seen from the positions of the Most High in the Order, i.e. the Pope. That is to say, the OTO chair looks out across all history, all time and space, all the higher spirits, the gloom of tachyons, the tesseract of fourth spatial time, the equivalent of C squared, it sees from the capstone's point of view and can overlook everything that has gone before. Truly, a wise area director will govern by deference, the friend of the ambassador and the trustworthy confidant of the Lodge GM, and lead according to their equality with their fellow members, seeing themselves also as dependent on the ambassador just as the Rosicrucians and Illuminati are upon the Lodge GM. To neglect wisdom in governing over an area, or representing the area's government's administration in a group of other locals, is to commit the lowest form of folly. To neglect wise government is to be embraced by the cyclone that killed Zeus. This is why we call our area a camp, because just as the many area officers from the many lodges throughout the land, all within regions, all within districts, all within the greater areas themselves, act similarly to an axon dendrite gap between a lodge neuron and an ambassador neurotransmitter Thus, they cathect the wills of each lodge via the ambassador, Chi, and form the offices of orders above them via hypercathexis of additional amounts of ego accumulation per nerve cell or lodge. Therefore, the officers of the York, Scottish, Rosicrucian, Illuminati, and OTO are all superlative to merely their stationary positions in the Lodge as officers. Each OTO officer, for example, is independent from every other officer of their own rank, aside from via the ambassador. Yet we say that these all collectively form the order of the OTO. Now, there is no necessary head of these orders. The members in each lodge form a network, and this itself is like a nervous system of lodges in which develops the variegated roles of self-awareness. So, if asked by a non-order member, explain to them about primacy versus recency, and explain to them about the ghostly officers of the ascended masters, how they correspond to this color, that shape, this order, this lodge office, etc. But do not bother trying to explain to them beyond this as to who exactly fills these offices, these chief executives of the orders, who dictate our ranks and explain our roles and the rules of our roles and by no means bother attempting to explain to the uninitiated that these four area directors of the OTO 
are only four of seven, while the other three, the OHO, the IHO, and Pope, are essentially public positions. Therefore, behold, we area directors hold the most powerful position in all the land. The executive committee is four-seventh comprised of area directors. In a closed base four session or an open base five senate, there are only four area directors presiding as the chief executive governing body. The other three are either silent, as in a presiding IHO and OHO under the Pope of the Order of Death, or public, as in literally open to first come, first serve entitlement to petition of redress of grievances. Thus, the area directors act as base four within seven in Senate, even though each is only one of five from a lodge. Therefore, just as each area director acts in a lodge, so too do they act in the Senate, and by their combinations of numbers comprise either a single officer from each lodge or a group of four or five senatorial chairs in a base four open or a base five closed session, respectively. As lodge members, our primary oath of allegiance is to the area or judicial court of the Scott Knight Ambassador and to the Senate network. Beside the Senate, each OTO lodge member is only a single individual, but in the Senate, the OTO chairs convene the actually Bohemian Order, or OTO. That is why this area is called a camp. The second title is Green. Now, green juxtaposes, or flashes, against orange, whose opposite color is indigo. This is why the OTO connects with the Scottish Rite of Masonry, because, just as Orange Knights Zion flash opposite indigo York Rite GMs, so too does the green OTO chair flash opposite the orange ambassadors. Green also juxtaposes, or flashes, opposite red and violet, and thus the role of the OTO chairs over areas is inimically influenced by and infused with the red column that proceeds beneath the orange ambassadors, through the spectral orders to the violet column directly opposite, underneath the indigo cube of the York GMs. However, the flashing of green opposite orange and indigo, and the flashing of green opposite red and violet are no great mysteries. Green also flashes opposite yellow and blue as well green flashes against every other color of the rainbow. The reason for this is that the albedo of green is exactly a one-to-one -one ratio blending of white light and black color as gray. Any adjustment to the tone of green represents a lighter or darker hue of gray. This tone of gray is also equivalent to any shade of color combinations. Thus, green contains the whole gradient of gray tones, and each gray tone is likewise reflecting an equivalent amount of light to the tone of another shade of another hue. This is why, in lower levels, I have described the air and clouds as green themselves, the median tone of their combined component colors, and the green foliage of leaves on plants and trees I have described as roseate. The green color is the gray light reflection between yellow sunlight and blue H2O. Likewise, all colors that are absorbed, reflecting only the color we see, are equivalent to mere albedo tones of gray light 
and likewise they are all equivalent to shades of any color such as is native to earth the color green that is why green flashes with every other color in the rainbow it is merely the combination of all hues rendering white and all colors rendering black that is then toned up or down by adding either white or shadows the result is gray tone however it appears green to our eyes here and now because beneath C photon light splits into the seven color spectrum and all light is tinted. Scientists will generally reject such abstract claims as that green is gray tone in color because gray tone is each shade of every hue and color but the evidence that green flashes against every single other color of the rainbow is nonetheless indisputable and irrefutable. Green flashes against every other hue in the light spectrum because it is a non-color, the color equivalent of diffuse pale light. Its albedo is equal to red and to violet, but its tone is opposite. The result is juxtaposition or flashing. Likewise, green is darker than orange, but brighter than indigo. And likewise, green is darker than yellow, but brighter than blue. Green, therefore, flashes in sequence between equal albedo red and violet across the scale of other spectral hues, appearing darker than orange and yellow on one side, and brighter than indigo and blue on the other. Green is gray in color. Just as flashing occurs between colors of opposite hue, so too is it caused by their opposing tones of albedo. This is why green can flash both light or dark opposite every spectral hue. It is the middle color of the rainbow, just as gray is between extreme light and shadow. Moreover, just as all colors sum black and all hues sum white, green is amidst all hues, within white, along with the others, but green is also the secondary color combination between primaries yellow and blue, which are the brightest, highest albedo, and darkest, lowest albedo of the primaries. The other primary is red, and it also flashes with green, because red and green have equal albedo, but opposite tone. Therefore, green flashes with every other hue in the spectrum, because it is a midpoint between the full spectrum of white light and the deeper tones of the shared hues, that is, ultimately, merely the amount of and not color of light they reflect. In short, green is the central hue, a secondary color, and a tone with albedo equal to perfect gray. That is why green flashes with every other color. Green is tonally neutral, flashes opposite every hue, and is a secondary color because it is central to the odd number-based color spectrum because it is between bright red and dark violet, and because it therefore has no innate tone of its own. Green is a non-color, the absence of tone. Again, green is the color version of gray. The third title is Tetrahedron. The tetrahedron is a symbol of the all-seeing eye. Its three faces above a fourth see all from their rotating position atop the capstone. Whether surmounting a pyramid or an arch, the roll of the capstone is the same. It marks the end that is the middle. For here is a mysterious aspect of the tetrahedron capstone. The end of time 
is the center space of the completed great work. Now look, look around, look everywhere. Nowhere will you find the single center point of the cosmos, that vacuum cavity void that is the surface of the supermassive black hole that consumes us from beyond outward. There is no precise location for the first disturbance of energy and antimatter creating matter. This is, just so, the lesson of the Holy Lands, where the scriptures are maintained in a growing desert climate, because there is no known location for Mount Hosea, the mountain of Moses in Zion, called later Mount Horeb and associated with Mount Hebron in Sinai. Of course, this mystical mountain will not be found so many thousands of years later, because, though the area remains the same, the terrain has changed. Why is this? Why is there no present, fixed, or mobile position for the Big Bang? Scientists assure us space is expanding outward ubiquitously. This spreading out occurring in Hilbert space between quanta. However, where is it going? Why do we not see space thinning out like stretched rubber? It is because space is being pulled upward from beyond its fastest speed, c. It is because quantum attraction gradually repels as well and it is because we exist at a midpoint between quantum decohesion and the simultaneous and perpetual filtering of matter into pure energy by consumption through black holes. The Big Bang of quantum expansion never ended, and so neither shall the simultaneous and perpetual Big Crunch of matter being swallowed up and shredded by black holes. The Big Bang and Big Crunch are both going on even now. The purpose of the tetrahedron is to represent the peak human experience. The Rosicrucian Neshima is the measure of phi over pi. Thus, phi is greater than the Neshima of phi over pi, and so it sits on one side as the pillar called by the Illuminati Chia. So too is pi greater than phi, and so it sits off to the other side as the pillar called by we Bohemians the pillar of Jakaida. Atop the arch between these two pillars is the Neshima, the measure of phi over pi. So one pillar, Chia, is phi, and the other is Jakaida, pi, and the capstone between them is the measure of their difference, phi over pi. Thus, even though the Jakaida and Chia support the Neshima, like pillars holding up an arch, the Neshima is the spirit, and thus equivalent to the fifth element, and therefore the tetrahedron is truly a symbol of the Neshima. However, it is of the Neshima upraised by the alignment of Jakaida and Chia, the pillars beneath it. The tetrahedron as a symbol of the Neshima represents the peak endurance point for the operating system experiencing the appraisal, i.e., the Neshima of phi over pi is only a measuring device for the vector system of the Jakaida and Chia. It is Jakaida that causes the peak experience, Chia that allows it, and the Neshima that experiences it. Therefore, just as the tetrahedron sits above the seven-color archway, whose pillars are red and violet, 
it symbolizes or refers to the Neshima atop the archway of Jakaida and Chia. Therefore, think of the green Bohemian tetrahedron as the highest point above the spectral arch, but also of the lowest point of the archway above of the twin pillars Jakaida and Chia. Think thus of the rainbow archway below and the phi over pi arch above, but think of the green tetrahedron as the capstone of both. The rainbow archway of the seven colors, chakras, bay of Ra, degrees of our order, etc., is right side up. Beneath the archway of phi over pi, upside down, above. Therefore the green tetrahedron flashes against the colors below it, and therefore the Neshima is the stable base below the Chikaida and Chia. Because the green tetrahedron is central and supernal to the other base five solids and base seven colors, it is associated with the Neshima or spirit that is the Ak supernal to the seven chakras, the Bay of Ra, and the Aura, the Ka, of the soul, the Ruach. Yet, the green tetrahedron, the juncture point or crux between the archway below and the upside-down archway above, is only symbolic of Neshima as such. Just as the Rosicrucian knows with certainty that their blue isosahedron of air represents the Neshima, and the Illuminati can tell you their yellow dodecahedron represents the Chia, you as a Bohemian Templar need to know that your green tetrahedron's meaning is that the seven chakra over aura based soul of man contains all the other components of one, the ak, the body or nefesh, two, the ka, the ruach aura or energy double, three, the seven bay of ra, the seven color chakras, Four, the Ak, or Neshima, spirit. Five, Chia, the lesser will. And six, Jakaida, the higher will, all contained within a single system. The seventh chakra, and thus one's entire soul, contains these six lesser aspects. We call this whole soul containing the six lesser components of nefesh, chakras, ruach, neshima, jakaida, and chia, adam kadman. The seventh self is the whole system of lesser selves before they became distinguished. The lesser selves are like the organs of the seventh self's body. Just as in Lodge we learn the nature of the four worlds of Kabbalah, so in our orders do we learn of the five components of our Kadman self, chakras, ruach, etc., apart from the physical shell self, the nefesh or ashlar self, as equivalent to five solids, which are then also equivalent to the four universal elemental forces under the fifth force spirit. But in our orders we are shown these meanings in an encrypted format. Just as we are told the green tetrahedron is the highest of the five solids, highest of the five elements, highest of the six parts of our or parts of Vim, Cadman self, highest of the seven colors, etc. So we see these different number scales for relative attributes have been fixed such that they align in a way meaningful to the mind. In point of fact, however, all symbols are arbitrary, to some degree more or less, depending on their accompanying explanations. Now, this is why the green tetrahedron symbolizes Neshima. 
is relative to Jakaida is equivalent to the true light of fifth dimensional tachyons, etc. It is because the most current form of degree system per order is considered the most important among the order of death and thus emphasis of rank is placed upon it. But I tell you truly, just as the double arch of seven colors below the phi over pi capstone and the twin pillars of Chia and Jakaida above, so too is our order arranged. The twin pillars of church and state upside down above the capstone over the seven colors of five orders and the twin pillars of red and violet. What is red below violet is state, and what violet below red, church. And so too the temptations of Adam and paradise, the fruits of immortality and omniscience, are hung above the seventh self, Cadman, or Christ, consciousness, which is above the other colors and flashes against them. And these lower colors are only the chakras, the Bay of Ra, inside the aura, the Ka, of this, our own peak experience, best memory, or highest self. The fourth title is Tachyons. Tachyons are the true or greater light of the fifth dimension. The shapes of fourth dimensional space that cast their shadows as aperiodic cycles of time in the third dimension are illuminated by the pure, clear, invisible light above C in the fifth dimension. Just as four space seems to us expressible only as pure geometry, then the fifth space can only be calculable by pure mathematics. However, our own consciousness can enter five space and even look down through pure geometric four space upon the entire physical composition and cycle of creation and destruction of our entire physical existence. Four space surrounds our own three-dimensional reality with shadow like an eclipsing moon, obscuring the luminous, limitless, still and calm, shimmering effervescence of the clear, true light of five spatial tachyons. The force of light is carried on two kinds of particle. Below C, the speed of light in a perfect vacuum, the particles carrying the force of light are the very large, though theoretically massless, i.e. without electromagnetic charge, spin zero, or rather as it is of one dimension, a ray or wavelength that, by quantum uncertainty, can be compressed into a point particle for a minimum duration, photon. Above C, which supersedes the imperfect vacuum of background radiation in deep space, the force-carrying particle unit of light is called a tachyon. Just as a wavelength for a photon ray exists as a disturbance to a field or field-like medium of quantum foam background zero-point energy, so does the photon particle emit Cherenkov radiation, smaller particles of illumination, from its surface. Just as these particles of Cherenkov radiation emanate out before the future trajectories of the photon as a ray or particle, so it is said the light from tachyons reaches us before the sights we see by photons so too can the mind perceive the current conditions of our spatial reality, even though the photons we observe with our eyes left their origins several billion years before we see them now. 
The shape of the tachyon particle is a torus, and the measure of a vector on its surface we render as the spiral within and around the torus, phi over pi. Holographically, the multiverse surrounding our universe after critical mass is a torus comprised of pure tachyonic light, each microwave length of which measures phi over pi. This hypersphere of the multiverse surrounding our universe also extends around in a torus over extremely long durations. On the opposite end of this cycle from our universe is the nulliverse of pure energy, pure light, from only one singularity inside a much more vast black hole within our parent universe. Just as a black hole in our universe spits out less energy than the amount of matter it takes in, and this additional consumed matter is inverted into the quantity of energy, antimatter from our point of view, discharged into the subquantum baby universe inside the singularity inside the black hole. So too is our own cosmos merely a baby universe in a torus cycle of pure light inside a massive black hole within our own parent universe. Most of the n-dimensional parent universe beyond our own three dimensions that is taken in as matter is converted into energy. Only a very minute portion filters through, down, and into our own 3D universe, which, since critical mass, is being consumed outward, i.e. expanding, faster than new zero-point energy enters our space-time realms. All of this can be known to the mind, even though, as of yet, none has been witnessed by the eye. It is tachyons that enable ESP. Merely project your meaning by visualizing an image of it being transferred from yourself to your subject, and eventually you will be able to move objects at will mentally. Tachyons or microwave subquantum gravity act as a field or fluid medium in which such thought, image, or will projection can occur. Inside your brain, when you imagine an image, the neurotransmitters create a holographic interpretation as an electrical waveform pattern between certain connected neurons. The medium of subquantum zero-point energy is where the potential energy accumulates inside the charged neurons allowing them to form a hologram mimicking the actual image, shape, subject, or object. The realms beyond the biological confines of nerve cells are of the same stuff, substance, medium, or field as the thoughts preceding our subsequent chemical cascades. All this universal reality is the same at its most basic level, and this level acts in accord to the will of our consciousness. Just as the will originates from the brain and travels down my arm to guide my hand as I write this, the thoughts we catch in our neural nets are, in some shape or form, ubiquitous to our reality. Just as the hand guides the pen, so too can the will travel beyond the body. Thus ESP is possible, and thus direct intent can be accomplished mentally. All reality is thought. At the level of tachyons, the speed of C squared, thoughts occur. The fifth title is Saturn. While the OTO attributes of the area of governorship over tachyons by the mind and the platonic 
regular solid of the tetrahedron are both from base 5 systems. The color green and the planet Saturn are base 7. As I have said elsewhere, in Atlantis there was no speculative form of masonry and there was no religion. There was no need for either and it is the esoteric exoteric division between these two that causes both to exist. They need each other. The reason for the creation of esoteric Freemasonry and monotheist religion was the flood. At the time the world's entire prior history was destroyed. Two cults formed. One blamed the flood on only one of a pantheon of deities the other blamed the pantheon and believed only one god had saved them. The evidence for the latter is the so-called Rainbow Covenant of Noah, renewed by the Ten Commandments of Moses. Noah, Moses, and their descendants all believed in the monotheist savior deity who promised never again to destroy mankind by flood. Of course, in South America, the pantheist religions preserved a different tradition. According to them, the earth and its populations had been destroyed twice before the flood as well, once by air, the equivalent of the fall of the rebel angels, and once by earth, the so-called fall of man. The flood, then, would be followed later by a destruction by fire. The pantheists of Sumer invented a new science to predict when the next cataclysm would occur, even though, according to the monotheists, who claim exemption, we can neither know the hour nor the day of its coming, which will be like a thief in the night. If we cause it ourselves, it will be through science versus religion, and thus only democracy will be the victim. The new science of the antediluvian pantheists was called astrology, and it was, and is, base 12. Every 2,000 solar orbits, according to the base 12 calendar of astrology, Earth enters a new age, or aeon, or sign. This is equivalent to one's own rising sign in their birth chart. The sun sign now is fixed to the last aeon, 2,000 to 4,000 years before now, 4,000 to 2,000 years later. Likewise, there are signs for each planet besides the sun as well, even including Earth's moon, out to Saturn. This is how we date the calendar and thus measure Earth's exact location to calculate its seasons, cycles, eclipses, etc., even over very long durations, such as the tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of years between ice ages, etc. The calendar of astrology, used openly by the esoteric pantheists and secretly by the exoteric monotheists, is, in point of fact, incomplete. So are the South American calendars and those of East Asia. Only when all are combined into one single system can we begin to restore the entire global Atlantean calendar. Just as the Western business calendar used among the modern monotheists measures rotations, day and night, per lunation, month, Per solar orbit, year, so did the Atlantean calendar measure all these for all seasons, I Ching, of Earth, our 24,000 year base 12 cycle, and of every other planet, the Tzolkin, in our solar system, as well as the longer cycles of our place in the Milky Way galaxy, the Great Cycle. The Atlantean calendar system frames the 64 base I Ching, 
36 base deacons of the base 12 zodiac, the base 7 planets, base 3 elements, combining as base 10, hence the Sephirah, the base 4 and the base 5 elements, as the solid states or forms of the acacia, the spirit element, all upon the base 144 system devised by John D. It shows us that the acacia or spirit element separates the 4 from the 20 and the 4 from the 16, leaving the 12. However, the base 10 system reduces by 3 to the base 7 system if either 4 are omitted, leaving 16 or 12. If the base 20 of 5 by 4 remains, though, the base 10 system becomes base 13. Thus, these numbers, the base 5 system and the base 13 system, are unique to the Atlantean calendar. Their equivalents, thus, in the Enochian system of the Golden Dawn, were the base 4 system and the base 7 system, respectively. The base 4 plus 3 equals the base 7, and so the base 4 times 3 equals the base 12 system. Therefore, the key to the Enochian system is base 3. However, the equivalent key for the Atlantean calendar is base 4, as 4 times 5 equals 20, and 13 times 4 equals 52, an Aztec century. Thus, 23 is a symbol of the base 4 and base 3 systems of the true Atlantean calendar and the Golden Dawn Enochian systems combined. It is this same way we can come to understand why, at the time of the flood and the loss of the original complete Atlantean calendar, the base 5 system became supplanted by the base 4 system because the 7 plus 5 became the 12. The six chief executives and the Pope of Atlantis, also called the Ten Kings in seven places of the seven antediluvian kings of Sumer, at the time of the Great Flood, came together and created the base seven laymen of angelic sigils in their places in the zodiac. This layman was given to Noah, Zayasudra or Utnapishtim, and saved from the flood, but subsequently was broken into seven pieces by Moses. The seven pieces, or glyphs, became the seven places in the zodiac and archangelic sigils known to the esoteric, pantheistic, and Masonic practitioners of astrology as the seven planets in the twelve signs of the zodiac. Thus, five were said to rule two each, and two to rule one more each. It was the flood that destroyed Atlantean democracy, based on number theory, and gave birth to monotheism, just as it was the flood that dispersed the components of the Atlantean calendar and gave birth to astrology. Monotheism replaced the calendar and astrology replaced democracy. Now, Democrats are labeled pantheists, believers in a just government, mere idealists, and the highest authority in all the land is the false pope. However, there is hope for those who wish to restore the ideals of Atlantis and Eden to reality. According to all who admit to the inevitability of the coming destruction by fire, there remains the promise of peace in an age governed by the fifth element, spirit, that will come following the fire that purges. At this time, we may yet see the right understanding of Atlantis we have now finally shared by all, in place of the mere belief in monotheism and the doubt of astrology as a pseudoscience. 
The authentic tradition preserves the attribute of the planet Saturn as a placeholder, representing the angelic sigil of one Atlantean chief executive at the time of the flood. Likewise, this angelic sigil, equivalent to Saturn, has a place in the zodiac over two signs of the astrological zodiac. However, these two signs of Saturn likewise only refer back to its place in the zodiac of seven glyphs. Understanding this, one understands all. The twelve and the seven are both from seven originally. The sixth and seventh titles are Aquarius and Capricorn. When the spring equinox rising sign was Aquarius, the north hemisphere was in a spring season following the electromagnetic pole reversal that unfroze America and froze Antarctica. As the American ice sheet melted, it rose worldwide sea levels. As Antarctica glaciated, it receded them again, though by then many coastlines had shifted. This was the beginning of the dispersion of the Atlantean and Arctic people to form the culture of Lemuria, the global coastal civilizations that raised the Shems, Henges, and Mynheers of the Neolithic period of Neanderthal and Homo sapien cohabitation. The first Homo sapien, Atlantean, Lemurian, Remains are found in South Africa, Australia, and South America. In Israel, north migrating Homo sapiens and south migrating Neanderthal cohabited, generating the originally Neanderthal myth of the fallen angels, etc. By this time, the spring equinox rising sign had preceded one sign into Capricorn. Saturn is the third Camia number square and the first in the magical ordering of the planets, skip two heptagram, within the seven-day week heptagon, based on these. Thus, being opposite sun and moon, Saturn is the only single planet to govern two consecutive signs of the zodiac in the seven and twelve system symbolizing the Camia. It should be noted that the layman representing the Camia, arranged around a spiral of Pythagorean triangles, the seven archangelic sigils on the seven glyph places in the zodiac, and the layman symbolizing the relationship between these seven sigils and the base twelve post-deluge zodiac are compatible, though only strangely, but that they are structurally two very different compositions. The Pythagorean spiral arrangement is square-shaped in its basic components. The base 12 zodiac is circular. This is why the tetrahedron is associated with cosmos according to modern attribution, rather than the elder Greek attribution of the dodecahedron. It is base 7, 3 plus 4, and base 12, 3 times 4, whereas the dodecahedron is base 12 and base 5. Hence, the dodecahedron is associated with Illuminati democracy and the subsequent religions of astrology. Thus, the tetrahedron contains, in its very shape, the key of it all. Saturn as ruler over the consecutive signs, Aquarius and Capricorn, in the base 12 zodiac, and as Camia, number square, in the base 7 Pythagorean arrangement, can thus be plotted on two kinds of laymen. Now apply the green tetrahedron, apply the key. 
by distorting the topography of the two flat lamens, we can add another layer of meaning by which to correspond them. Thus, fold up the squares to form the three-sided corner of a cube. Thus, twist the zodiac to form the torus from the circle. Just as the circle bisects the sphere, so too does the twisted or looped base 12 circular zodiac bisect the torus. Just as the loop bisected torus measures the phi over pi spiral on its surface, so too can the bent or folded Pythagorean arrangement map the same spiral. The procession of Pythagorean expansion of the Kamiya base units that is caused by the phi ratio triangles of the central equiangular spiral can be graphed onto the pi spiral, rectilinear and equiangular, as opposed to triangular and equiangular, while the layman shape is still a flat plane. Thus, when the layman is folded up one dimension, both phi and pi will appear. The tetrahedron as keystone, the rulership of Saturn over Aquarius and Capricorn, the placement of the third camia in the 3D phi over pi version of the square layman, the aeons of the zodiac, the cataclysms that destroyed Atlantis. None of these things are random. All are carefully planned, artfully crafted, and skillfully observed. There is, therefore, order in the universe. It cannot, hence, be said, all is chaos. The eighth title is Jakaida. Do the true will. This is the law. Yet still incendiaries here and there ask, what is the true will? And how must we sacrifice to inherit rewards in the afterlife? What then is the true law if you know not the true will? And if you know not the true will as law, then no amount of sacrifice will do. Instead, petty narcs and ne'er-do-wells have purloined Thelema from its guru and greet one another with the blasphemy, my will or your will be done. No, a thousand times no. If love is the law, love under will, then the will is above and as its spirit infuses the law. The law is animate only by the will. Yet the modern Thelemites understand nothing. They believe in the will as law and recognize only their own will as the most high. They err. They believe the law should read, the law is love under will. It is not. To deny this fact is to deny one's own freedom. No, the law does not state, do what you wilt. It states quite plainly, do what thou wilt. The high form of thee, thou, is used only in addressing adult males and is equivalent to the title, Lord. This indicates the high English of Liber Al Val Legis is meant to be addressed to the monotheistic version of the deity. Thus, do what thou wilt, becomes the law, also, of Christ, given by Jesus to Pilate and the sectarian Sanhedrin. Christ debunked addressing the fallen state and the monotheist church. Crowley thus cast no pearls before swine. 
His audience was everyone, all of us now, and all those gone before and yet to come. Crowley gave the law of do what thou wilt to us all, and thus debunked the entire Christian morality. As Crowley put it, I drank and danced all night with doubt, and awoke to find her a virgin in the morning. Martyrdom is false morality. However, now, only 100 years into it, Thelema has been co-opted by godless lawbreakers and bloodless vampire politicians. Moreover, most people miss the fact that the Apocalypse of St. John, the so-called Book of Revelations of the Roman Catholic New Testament, has already concluded occurring. The work, though entirely allegorical for the politics and priests of the day, was intentionally played out on the world stage during the 20th century. Crowley played the part of the great beast. Jones, a cod, was his prophet. Mathers, Waite, and Rigardi were, like the three other stooges, the three prophets of God, the false prophet deposed and left unburied. Their wrathful ghosts became Hitler, Mussolini, and first Lenin, then Stalin. The Battle of Armageddon at Harmageddon was actually fought between British imperialists and fascist-backed Arabs in World War II. This is a fact recorded in the annals of military history. The remainder of the 20th century saw a rapid buildup of doomsday weapons and the creation of a false state of Israel. As the book says, I am the warrior god of the 40s. The 80s cower before me and are abased. While we entered the 20th century a planet of disparate peoples, we leave it much more globally unified, however armed to the teeth with enough ammo to destroy the world a hundred times over. And this all brings us back to the turn of the millennium and a world suddenly usurped in every way by the Neo-Sethians. Beware, wise and noble scholar, like disenchanted Jesuits, like spies left out in the cold, like burnouts, and the wanderers and fools they are. These secular Neo-Sethians, believers in the second coming of Jesus Christ, are invading the POD via the OTO degree. Most are simple Neo-Nazis, some are crypto-fascists calling themselves neoconservatives. They all share the belief, also held to be true 2,000 years ago, about Jesus, that he will now, as the Sethites believed he had then, appear again. The Sethites believed Seth, first wise mortal born, was the first messiah. They accepted Jesus as the second coming of Seth and imbued him with all the magical abilities due a holy ghost who came and possessed Jesus now, then someone else, then Judas, or Peter, then Jesus again, etc. This is the Christ consciousness of modern trans-channelers called also Kether or the crown of thorns of global and universal psychic awareness that is then passed around and shared among only a few. In order to preserve the possibility for the restoration of the Atlantean democracy, we need to do away with all such types of monotheist mumbo-jumbo and gibberish. Superstition is a useful instinct but ideals are more than only 2,000 years old 
and anthropomorphized as Jesus. If you want to uphold true ideals, look further. By studying cycles, looking ahead will soon become as easy as looking back. Eventually, all will become clear for each. When one group of psychics uses the myths of monotheism to suppress another group's right to self-expression, free thought, and thus deprives them of their God-given ESP, this group of soul killers are rightly called a psychic conspiracy. But I tell you, not all psychics are in on the conspiracy. This concludes the knowledge lecture on the traits of the Bohemian OTO.